Yesterday, Denim did a great job introducing the modern day heroes of faith. Um, he started off by talking about an evangelist, and I'm going to move kind of in a different direction um, and talk about someone in the music, not the music, the entertainment industry, um, Candace Cameron Bure. For those of you who don't know, that's DJ Tanner from Full House or Fuller House. Um, so you might know her a little bit better from that. Um, so just to start off, she came to know Christ at the age of 12 years old because a family and um, her friend actually invited her to come to church with them. Um, and ever since her family knew Christ, she knew Christ. Um, it wasn't until the age of 20, uh, her brother, Kirk Cameron, the evangelist, uh, had given her a book. And that's when her adult relationship with Christ really grew um, and strengthened from there. So prior to this, her and her family had no um, relationship with Christ they didn't talk about him. She knew nothing about him. They never went to church, nothing like that. Um, today, she's become one of the most influential women um, because of her walk with faith and her openness to discuss that, um, not only in the roles that she chooses to play um, in the entertainment industry and in the movies that she does um, and the TV shows that she does, um, but just during talk shows and different things like that. So. She currently preaches the word of the Lord. Um, she does it both verbally and written, which is amazing. Um, like I said, she goes on talk shows, um, and she also um, does seminars and things like that. So she goes around um, to preach to different people. She's also written a lot of books, and from what I've read from her book, she does a lot on how her faith has helped her being a mother and a wife. Um, so that's that's really awesome as well because she's reaching a ton of different people, not only her viewers, but um, the people that are more interested in that as well. So this alone has created this Christian culture um, that people are now surrounding themselves with and wanting to learn more about because she's reaching out. Um, so she's not only been called to do this, um, but much like myself, she's been called to work with children. Um, for those of you who don't know, right now I'm in school to be an art teacher because I love kids. Um, and that's just my calling. Um, so she's done the same thing, except for she feels called to help children who are in poverty, who need food and shelter and different things like that. So she has done that in a ton of different ways. Not only does she participate in um, a sponsorship called Skip One, um, this is a charity that encourages people to skip the frivolous spending, skip everything that they, the extra coffee that they could get, that t-shirt that they really need because it's super cute, um, anything like that. It's just encouraging you to skip a day of all of that so that you can feed children um, that might need it um, because you know you might have food that day and they don't. So she does a lot of really fun things with that. The one thing that I had read was she does arm wrestling contests, thumb wrestling contests for money. It's, it's amazing. So she's really awesome. Um, she's also an ambassador for places like the Salvation Army um, and the National House of Hope. Those are people that are raising materials and money for people, um, the whole families that need these materials, need these clothing items, um, things for their homes. So she does tours to not only spread the word, but she's also able to go in and actually meet these families that need these things. So that's really amazing. Um, because sometimes I think when we think of the entertainment industry and we think of actresses and actors, we don't always think of them as you know, coming down and actually taking the time to meet these people. Um, we just think, you know, they're sometimes they'll give their money, cool, great. Um, but she's actually taking the time to get to know them, get to know their struggles so that she can learn herself how to help them more. Um, one of the main things that she does is she's a sponsor and an advocate for Compassion and the Compassion International Program. So I thought this was really awesome because many of us know there is a ton of programs out there for sponsoring children who are hungry, whether that's in the United States or in other countries. But this one not only does that, it provides them with the health care that they need, it provides them if they have any special circumstances, like they need surgeries, um, you know, different things like that. But it also, the staff that's a part of this program mentors the children during, you know, their younger life, helps them get through a lot of things, and not only does it do that, it teaches them the word of the Lord. Um, which was the thing that really stood out to me the most about this program over others um, is because they're teaching them the love of Jesus Christ from this young age if they can get to them that young um, and they're providing them with Bibles and providing them with the with the materials that they need to move forward in their own walks with faith yeah. um, so she's been a mentor for many people in their walks um, she's a big influence for me um, like I said she is not like everybody else in the entertainment industry that you know 
they might just work for money. Um, she's been very careful about the roles that she chooses. She always has been. Um, and because she found God at such a young age, that was really helpful for that. Um, so she's actually turned down a lot of roles and received a lot of criticisms for her being so passionate and so open about her faith. She won't take anything um, that's going to go against God's word or that's going to you know, maybe be inappropriate. She wants to always keep it um, within God's guidelines and within her faith and just family appropriate as well. So I really admire her for that because she's missing out on probably a lot of opportunities and sometimes... <coughs> You know, that can definitely be hard. You want, you know, the treasures of the earth. They're really, you know, the, those are the temptations. Um, and it's really nice to see somebody with that big influence that doesn't give in um, to temptations such as taking the role because it's going to have extra money, because it's going to give her this extra fame, um, all of those things. So I'm actually reading her stories and, you know, some different things that she's been participating in. And as I was going on, um, I actually found a second hero in her story as well as her brothers. Um, so I'm actually going to turn the story a little bit um, to your attention to the other story in the hero, which is actually the friend that invited them to church in the first place. Um, Kurt Cameron, her brother, was actually an atheist before he found God, and he found it the exact same way. It wasn't the same friend, um, but someone had invited him to church, and because of that, those people who are not named in the story, much like the um, scripture that we read yesterday with the prophet who's also not named um, they did these things and they reached out to them and because of that Candace and her brother Kirk were able to go out and influence and reach all these people and help them find God um, so she is definitely or he I, I really don't know if the friend is a boy or a girl um, but they are a big part of this story um, in you know allowing all these people to hear the word of God. So um, I thought that was really awesome. And it's just a really simple act that you can do um, inviting them. So while you may not be a Candace Cameron Beret, you might not be, you know, outgoing and or at least you don't think you are. Um, you might not be willing to go up to people and hang out with a big group of friends. You might be the one that's going to sit back and read the book and, you know, just invite your one friend like the child in Cameron, uh, Candace's life did. Um, so, it doesn't matter what way you reach out to people, because you don't, you don't have to preach the word the way that Candace does now. You don't have to, um, you know, be a sponsor. Obviously, not everybody has money. You don't have to do all of those things, because God made you intentionally exactly the way that you are right now. Um, he has put these personalities and these qualities in your life, because he knows that you can use those things to reach various people. Um, if we didn't have people here like Denim, um, Courtney, Aaron, all of these different counselors and, you know, even the campers that are sitting here, if we were all the same person, first of all, that would be very boring. Um, and you wouldn't be able to reach anybody outside of that group because you wouldn't know how to reach out to them in the first place. So everybody's going to have different approaches. So whether you're going to be the Cameron Candace Beret or you're going to be the unnamed friend of the story, you know, we need to be the hands and feet to spread the love of God. So let me, I've got some, some things marked here um, that I would like to read. So the first one is Hebrews chapter 13, um, verse 16. You guys don't have to go here. I've got it all highlighted. So um, it says, sorry, 15, 16, I guess I added on. Um, Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name, and do not forget to do good and to share with others with such sacrifice as God is pleased. So, you know, we all have the opportunity to share on a daily basis, no matter what we're doing in our lives, no matter if you're at school, if you're at work. Um, I know a lot of you are in sports and extracurricular activities. Um, you can always reach out to somebody. There's always somebody that, you know, needs reached out to. I want to ask a question. How many of you he are here because a friend asked you to come? I know I am. How many are, of you are here because um, you were invited as a counselor to come? So if Ryan hadn't reached out to all of these counselors, and if your friends hadn't reached out to you to invite you to this camp, this may not be an experience that you get to have. Um, 
So just think about that as you're walking through your daily lives. Think about what this change could mean for someone. Just because you don't know them very well or, you know, that might not be your typical friend group doesn't mean that they don't need Jesus in their life. Um, they might not always know how to get there. So you taking that step to introduce this might be the, the very beginning of their new life with Christ. So my second thing, um, step out of your comfort zone, definitely. Take that leap of faith. Lean on your own faith to... Pray to God that he's going to give you the courage and the strength to reach out to these people. I lost my place, so just give me like two seconds. Okay, I got it. Um, so the next one, I'm going back a little bit in Hebrews. So this is Hebrews chapter 10, um, verses 24 and 25. It says, And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. So... Be the ones to spur that onto these other people. Be the ones to spread the love and to encourage them to come to camp or invite them to church on Sunday or a Bible study. Or if you know that you and you know a group of your friends from the Bible study are even hanging out, it doesn't even have to be a situation where Jesus is known to be present. Um, these conversations can still come up and you could change somebody's life forever. And it doesn't matter that you guys are, you know, still in school. It also doesn't matter what circumstances you're under. So you could be you could be reaching people regardless of the circumstances you're in, and also you can reach people no matter if you're still currently in a bad situation. God is going to use you wherever you are in life. God wants to use you. I think Ryan said this yesterday or sometime. Somebody said it. God wants to use you. You just have to be willing to say yes. Um, and be used in that way. And sometimes you don't know that with a bad situation you might be in, you might think, oh my gosh, I can't. Like, you don't have to have it all together. God is not asking you to have it all together. He's asking you to take that leap of faith and reach out to somebody. Um, he's also healing you in the process. If you're sharing your testimony and you're sharing, you know, all of these things that God can bring into your life, even though you're in a bad situation, you're in the process of healing as well as, you know, introducing God into these people's lives. So that also amazing. Um, so sometime earlier this week, we said that God wants to lead us. So like I said, it's up to us to listen. If these friends of the Cameron family hadn't reached out to them and said, hey, come to church with me, it's as simple as that. They might not have reached as many people as they have today. Would God still have found them? Yes, eventually, because God's never going to stop chasing you. So he's always going to find a way back to you. But you could be that one person that makes a complete difference in somebody's life, whether you know it or not, and whether you get you know, the recognition for that or not. Um, they didn't need the recognition. They don't care. They were innocently inviting their friend to church, and you know it spurred into something amazing. So God's... So God's timing is definitely always perfect. So that was the reason why, you know, those people had invited them to church when they did because they were able to then go into the entertainment industry, both of them, um, on their own and do good with it. They weren't going to focus on the earthly treasures and they weren't going to focus on the temptations. They were focusing on doing God's work um, and spreading the love of God. So whether you realize it or not, God made you exactly the way that he did um, because he knows that you're going to use your own personalities to reach others. Um, I am not, I'll go up to literally anybody, and I know that some people aren't like that. Um, some people, like I said earlier, are just going to be the ones that are kind of quiet, kind of um, reading books, but like-minded people are going to get along, um, and that's going to be so much easier when trying to reach out, you know. Just reach out to anybody that you possibly can. Like I said earlier, if you feel as though you can't, um, just pray for courage, pray for peace um, for that as well. So I'm going to leave you with, with something. Um, so I don't have this thing, but I have it written down. So just to leave you with this, if God is powerful enough to make this beautiful entire earth that we live on, what makes you think that he isn't mighty enough to have you created exactly the way that he intended? He made you for a reason. You're exactly who you're supposed to be, and you're exactly where you're supposed to be right now in this moment. We can't just contain church camp 
and you know praise him and tell them that he is worthy and say you know you know lead me you know all these things and then go home and like keep him in this church camp box we're at the point in time where you know a lot of you have been here for years and every year we come back with all these struggles but we can't keep him in this box it's going to make it a lot easier if we go home and we spread the word at work at school because then you're going to have more people on your side and on god's side to fight with you Thank you.